Hey, welcome to another video. I've had a few requests to go back and do a little bit of more infrared photography and maybe even particular macro infrared photography. So I ventured down here to the local, uh, they call it the Scrub Jay Park. Um, a lot of palm trees and scrub palms or whatever they want to call them. I haven't been here for, I don't know, six months. <clears throat> Last time I was here, they had cleared it out quite a bit. And uh, there just wasn't much going on. Um, now, while I'm filming this, this is towards the end of June. And it's not a good time of year for photography. But it's not a bad time of year for infrared photography. So we'll see if there's any kind of growth that we can take some shots of and follow me along. See you in a few. So here we are at the High Ridge Scrub Park, as they call it. Uh, it says it's 1.5 miles all the way around. One thing we they put in here are these endangered tortoises. I see them quite often. You may see one in this video coming up. One thing that I, I want to mention that people that don't necessarily live in a, a hot area that you have to be careful of is your lenses. When you get in and out of the car, if you get out and it's just really hot and humid, sometimes your lenses could fog up a little bit. So you have to let them adjust for a few minutes until they settle back down. And then even when you get back in the car, you have your air conditioning on, they might fog up again. So when you get out, you have to go and <coughs> put them up on the shelf and kind of let them adjust to the air room temperature again. So it's just if, you, if you're not from this area and you come to this area to photograph, just be aware of your lenses. These are the kind of leaves I usually like trying to do with, with macro, especially if they're backlit. Sometimes I wonder when I'm walking around this place what a guy like Simon Baxter might find. Some of the other woodlands type photographers because there's just so much clutter and so much chaos in here. You know, maybe something like this tree here. They'd be able to pick something out, but always makes me wonder what they would see versus what I would see since I'm not really a, a woodlands type photographer. They see things a lot different than I do. I'm trying to get better at it. But it would be interesting to see what they would pick out out of all this madness. There's one of the turtles' dens. They get down in there. I don't think anybody's home. But we'll probably find one. Now maybe these trees might make for something. In the right light with some infrared. If you get this with the right composition. Might be able to get something out of that. This one's maybe even better. And actually, That's probably a lot better. And you get enough separation there. You get a shot of that. This might be a nice composition if you could find one with this tree here. The way it's lit right now. There's a few different ways of doing infrared. Well, probably more than a few, but the reason why I bought it was to try and do some really high contrast black and white <clears throat> and it turns out that I've probably done more or as much traditional 
quote unquote type infrared with swapping out the red and the blue channels as I have trying to do the black and white you know like this this guy here probably wouldn't look so good in black and white but if you swap out the red and blue channels might be better and do a more traditional look but you can get some separation here from the background. Now I'm using a Nikon Z50. It's a converted camera. And right now because I'm doing macro, I've got the 105 macro S lens for the Z system. I don't use that lens probably enough to justify keeping it, but I pull it out every once in a while. So we'll see if I end up keeping it or not. It's a beautiful lens. I just don't I don't like having lenses just sit in the basket and not use it. But you can see you really have to look hard. The leaves are what I use to do in macro. And unfortunately, I'm, at least this morning, I'm just not finding ones that are lit the way I like. Even though I came out relatively early, I didn't get out here probably early enough to get them backlit the way I want them. You know, I start this video talking about <clears throat> lenses and how they can fog up. What I failed to mention was if you have them in your camera bag when you're, when you're going home, just let them stay in your camera bag for maybe an hour or so, if they're fogged up. Just let them stay in there for an hour or so. But it's, and then take them out and put them wherever it is you store them. I know a lot of people put them on a shelf. I actually have a dehumidifier I put mine in because down here there's just lenses can get mold pretty easily from the humidity there's another cardinal a lot of cardinals this morning I don't know if it's the same one or not but I'm at a far different area in the in the park I'm still seeing them but anyway yeah so it doesn't happen all the time but in July and August, sometimes here in June, the humidity is such that when you go from the coolness of your car or the coolness of your home to outside, they will occasionally fog up. So you have to be aware of that. So I usually just let them sit in the bag. If they do do it, I let them sit in the bag for a while and put them on the shelf and then eventually put them back into the dehumidifier. Scrub jays don't like me hanging around. So that's just a tip if you come to a high humidity type area like South Florida, just be careful with your lenses. And also, never let them sit in the trunk of your car. That's the quickest way of ruining them down here in South Florida. I mean, if you got to run into the store for 15, 20 minutes or something, fine. But don't leave them in your car for hours. Like, don't go to the beach and leave your lenses and your camera in your car. You do that once too often and you won't have your lenses anymore. So, just be very careful of that as well. That's your tip of the day for South Florida living starting to get pretty hot. I haven't found too many subjects yet. So I may have to come back tomorrow or the next day. Work out a few more images. Alright, just as I was about ready to end this video, I finally ran into a tortoise.
You want to say hi? No? He's a... Maybe a medium-sized one. I've seen them bigger than that in here. But they wander around eating the plants. Of course, you're not supposed to touch them or mess with them a whole lot, and I don't. But I guess they're probably relatively used to seeing people in here. But that's one of our tortoises. They burrow themselves into the ground. <clears throat> like I said, usually by this time of the morning, they're out of the heat. So I don't know where this guy's den is, but it's probably not too far away. So I'm glad we got to find a tortoise at least. One last tip. When you do something like this, Typically what I do is I retrace where I came from so that in essence I'm seeing everything that was behind me. I see it forward then I see it backwards. And sometimes you see things a little bit differently when you turn in the other direction. So typically I'll, I'll do that. I'll take the route and then I'll just come right back the same way or relatively the same way that I started with. So I appreciate you coming out for a little stroll in the local nature park with me this morning. It's starting to get a little hot and toasty out here. So I think I'll mosey on back into my nice little air conditioned car. And I appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe button. Helps me out a little bit. Until next time. Take good care of yourself. A few final thoughts regarding the Nikon 105 macro S lens. Using it the way I was out in <clears throat> out in the woods, I, I that wouldn't be my first choice for lenses. I would probably lean more towards if I had a 35 millimeter towards that, <clears throat> or using the 50 millimeter, which I do have. I think the 105 is just, the, the focal length is just a little too long for uh, woodlands photography. Might be better for landscapes. Uh, I had intended to do a lot more macro than I did, but the wind had picked up and the leaves really weren't interesting. I didn't find any spiders. So I just didn't shoot macro with the infrared. I don't know how well, honestly, it would hold up anyway. I think for infrared, at least so far, my favorite lens has been the 50 millimeter focal length. Again, if I had a 35, maybe I would pick that one. But so far, I've tried everything from the 20 up to the 300, and the 50 millimeter has still been my favorite focal length. For woodlands, again, if I had a 35, that might be my favorite, but because I have the 50, that's, that's the one I choose. So that's my little experiment. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, until next time, take good care and I'll see you soon.